up everybody golden yogi here and you are tuning into the channel with the golden perspective today again it's monday that's the day we look at on-chain analysis our newsletter from glassnote insights uh before we get into that i want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already uh you may have noticed a few changes around the website uh you know my images change over the years as all things do change uh like bitcoin price bitcoin inflow outflow we get into all that if uh please you know again subs uh, if you uh turn on the post notifications while you're down there um subscribing or checking other stuff out be sure to catch all the videos and uh as they will let you know and leave a comment okay uh let me know what you think my only request is to please be civil in your discourse kindness and compassion are absolutely free to all of us i really think if that if we take a moment and put it through that filter those two filters of kindness and compassion we can help make the world the place that we want to see in the world all right we get what we put out so uh also thumbs up thumbs down i really want to know what you think i'm not looking for yes people or or just you know fud people or whatever this probably isn't going to be perceived as fud as it's just some you know i'm just reading you a newsletter this is easy today all right so we have week 28 of 2021 the bitcoin market squeezes into tight trading range as we assess the range of market indicators for sentiment and volatility triggers it has be, uh, been an impressively quiet week in the Bitcoin market as volatility continues to seep out. Uh, the price continues to squeeze into a tight consolidation range. The week opened at a high of 35,128, traded down to a low of 32,227. It is starting to feel like the calm before the storm as muted and quiet activity appears across both spot, derivative, and on-chain uh, metrics. <clears throat> This week, we'll explore a broad range of metrics and indicators across the entire Bitcoin market to establish overall sentiment, volatility triggers, and models for investor behavior. So we can see right here, as we were inside of this week, which is highlighted in a pink, that's, that's, that's the move. Tiny, right? When you look at everything Bitcoin has done before. Early signs of minor recovery. So a key theme of the previous two editions of this new letter have focused on the changing conditions around the Bitcoin mining market because of the shutdown of Chinese uh, mining. A key takeaway in establishing a bullish or bearish bias is the speed at which the hash rates recover. <clears throat> so if we have a ha uh, rapid hash rate recovery, meaning very quickly it recovers, uh, it may suggest offline miners have successfully recloaded or relocated or reestablished their hardware recovering costs and likely reducing the risk of treasury liquidation, meaning sell-off pressure of the Bitcoin that they have in their stash. The low hash recovery rate may suggest the opposite, where cost and outage continues to take a financial toll on their operation and thus they have to sell off their Bitcoin, which is their treasury. This week, the hash rate recovered from the peak trough, declined uh, 55% from its high, to around 39% decline. This should level hold. Uh, this should this level hold and be representative. It would indicate a hash power equivalent to around a minus 29% of the affected hash rate power has come back online. This could be due to miners in China that have successfully relocated their hardware, or previously obsolete hardware has been dusted off and found a new lease on life. So you can see here that from this peak to trough at a minus 55%, but from the peak to, I like that peak, um, to the current, it's a minus 39%, okay? But it's moved up, I believe they said 29% from here to here. So, somewhat impressive. <clears throat> the mean hash rate, uh, okay, that's the mean hash rate live chart, but all right, we ex previously noted that miners who remained operational at this time would experience a dramatic boost in profitability, minimizing the compulsory sell pressure. To support this thesis, the minor net position change metric has returned to accumulation. This indicates what uh, that what sell side pressure is coming from offline miners is more than offset by accumulation by the operational miners. A major downside change to this metric would suggest financial stress is affecting the mining market and likely foreshadow an increase in liquid supply. 
meaning more on the market to sell, which could mean price go down. But the opposite is happening. So far in this uh, this week, we've moved into an accumulation phase. And that's overall all mining. So uh, for addresses that have mined, okay? That's the beauty of uh, on-chain analysis. We can see what miners are doing for the most part. A key theme throughout 2020 and quarter one of 2021 was relentless depletion of exchange coin reserves. That means what's available in exchanges to buy. With many of them en route to the grayscale GBTC trust or accumulated by institutions, this showed up as a persistent net outflow from exchanges. Throughout May, this trend dramatically reversed as a flood of BTC was deposited to exchanges alongside the market selling off by around 50%. On a 14-day moving average basis, the last two weeks in particular have seen uh, a more positive return to exchange outflows as a rate of about 2,000 BTC per day. As volatility squeezes out of the market, it is common for mempools to clear and demand for block uh, space to decline. As such, the transactions that are executed tend to represent a less speculative and more purposeful sample compared to a frothy bull market. This week, the pro, uh, proportion of on-chain transaction fees associated with exchange deposits declined 14% to 14% dominance after a brief peak of around 17%. Continuation of this as a structural trend may reinforce a thesis sell side pressure is subsiding. So we're chilling out, okay? It feels like that, I gotta say. Conversely, the proportion of on-chain fees associated with the withdrawals saw a notable bounce from 3.7% all the way to 5.4% in a, uh, that's a 43% boost in relative dominance. This too suggests a rising preference for accumulation over sales. Note that deposit fee dominance will generally be larger than withdrawals in magnitude, generally as a result of exchanges uh, deploying batching techniques for efficiency, including many customer withdrawals under a single transaction and fee. Yeah, so increase in withdrawal dominance. Um, last on exchanges, the aggregate balance has fallen by around 40,000 BTC over the past three weeks. This represents approximately 28% of the total inflow of 140,000 BTC observed since the local low set in April. Exchange balances we track are currently holding 2.56 million coins. <clears throat> so this orange one is tracking how many coins are on exchanges over time. You can see from August 2020, we have been going down, down, down. So quite a bit down from last year. You can see where our lows were at and as they started coming more on the market throughout the time of the dump. All right, moving forward. <clears throat> Derivatives quiet off, quieten off. That's, I guess, quieten off. <laughs> Across derivative markets, we see relatively quiet conditions as open interest stalls and trading volumes continue to decline. Given the heavy influence of derivative markets in the leverage flush back in May, this suggests a reduced appetite for leverage speculation. Since the sell-off in May, futures open interest has remained bound between 10.7 billion and 13 billion, with only a handful of notable builds or declines within that range. Open interest remains at 57% below the all-time high set in April as Coinbase went public. <clears throat> Here we are, futures open interest over time. Uh, cool, we can see, you know, which exchanges here. Volumes across futures markets are also in decline. The uh, falling back to 45 billion traded per day, these volume levels were last seen in quarter one of 2021, where prices were trading at a similar range of 29,000, 38,000. USD. This puts current volumes 62.5% uh, and 49% lower than the May uh, number one and June number two capitulations, respectively. So we can see here the May first capitulation and then second in June as it took off again. 
Options markets are experiencing a similar slowdown, with open interest falling by over 67% since typical highs of $13.2 billion in March and April. Current option open interest at $4.4 billion returning to December 2020 levels. A lot less than the leveraging, it seems like. Well, remember that correct. Yes. With such significant decline across all derivative markets, it become increasingly likely that market volatility will be driven by spot volumes rather than short long squeezes or leveraged liquidations. Thus, the direction of the next large move is likely to strongly reflect underlying supply and demand rather than speculative premium discount. <clears throat> Again, more pointing at that people really believe that this price range that we've been looking at over the last three weeks is considered to be real, real value. Okay. Supply dynamics, dynamics. Now that we have covered miners, exchange flows and derivative markets, we finally turn to dynamics of existing holders of the coin supply. Here we are looking for the balance of spending and holding patterns to assess investor sentiment and conviction. The ASOL metric captures the average age of spent outputs in a daily basis. Being that ASOL considers only the average age of spent outputs, not coin volumes, it's largely unaffected by quiet mempools. <clears throat> Excuse me. The chart below also uses entity adjustment to filter out exchanges and similar economic entities who often use low on-chain fee environments for wallet consolidation and management. Similar to the 2017 and 2019 peaks, the average age of spent outputs is rapidly collapsing, indicative of a return to higher conviction hodling and likely accumulation, noting it takes time for subsequent accumulation supply squeeze to manifest. To manifest. To manifest. <clears throat> <clears throat> ASOL suggests that overall older coins that are increasingly dormant, um, that older coins are increasingly dormant, sorry. <laughs> the HODL waves provide more data points to support this thesis. The chart below filtered for coins age between two years and five years. These age bands reflect two groups of strong conviction buyers, both of which held through significant volatility. A two to three year holder accumulated in the bear market from late 2018 through the 2019 peak. These investors currently hold 9.8% of the supply. Since March of 2020, 5.2% of the circulating supply has matured from the two to three year band into the three to five year band. Three to five year holders have accumulated between July 2016 and July 2018 and thus represent last cycle's bull market buyers. This cohort continues to grow now, representing 13.1% of the supply. These investors bought between 640 and the previous all-time high at 20K and have held through significant volatility. For middle-aged uh, coins, six months to two years, we can see that through Q1 of this year, the investors were largely distributing declining waves. Uh, the accumulation range for those Q1 sellers extend as far back as January 2019 after the 2018 capitulation down to 3K, this uh, capturing a tidy profit multiple. These cohorts appear to have re uh, recently commenced a switch in behavior from spending into a holding pattern. Coins aged one year to two years currently represent 13.3% of the supply and were accumulated from mid-19 to mid-2020. After distributing heavily in Q1, their holdings plateaued, indicating a slowdown of spending. <clears throat> Coins aged 6 months to 12 months are uh, this cycle's bull market buyers and now hold 9% of the coin supply. This age band has started to notably swell during uh, starting in early April, indicating that a large proportion of buyers from November of 20, November December of 2020 have not spent their coins. The evolution of these middle middle age hodlers uh, hodl waves over the next three months will key uh, will be key to appreciating how much of these early institutional supplies remains tightly held or conversely was sold over recently. <coughs> <coughs> Finally, we investigate the youngest economically meaningful coins. 
those aged between one month and six months. These represent bull market buyers who were generally buying coins off older hands, realizing profits. This behavior is evident from November 2020 to May 2021 as young coin supply swelled from around 22% to over 32%. However, since the sell-off in May, the young coin supply has commenced a structural downtrend, which indicates coins are maturing. Hodling is taking place and accumulation is likely underway. It is favorable favorable for price of if it is favorable for price if young coin supply continues to decline, old coins dormant and young coins maturing. Conversely, large spikes in young coin supply suggest renewed distribution and would favor a bearish bias. Hodl on, little guys. That's pretty good. So we have this on-chain dashboard. You can go back and you look at the previous weeks. Highly encourage you to come check this out for yourself. Insights.glassnode.com. You can see it up here at the top. And you can subscribe to it. Also, you can subscribe to me. And hopefully every Monday, I will read this to you so you can just kick back, do something around the house, chill on the beach, uh, whatever. Enjoy your summer outside, sipping a beer or a nice cool glass of Chardonnay, whatever you like. I have no idea. So anyways, I love you all. Take care. Be good. Peace.